much, Andy. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome uh, to my talk. Uh, we're going to talk about an OWASP NetTaka project. Uh, first few more words about me. Uh, my name is Sam Stepanian. I'm known as SecureStep9 on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, please follow me there. I'm also on Mastodon, SecureStep9 at InfoSec Exchange. Um, uh, I do come from software development background, just like many of us in application security. I'm an ex-developer. I've uh, been leading OWASP London chapter since November 2015. Um, I'm, so I'm a co-leader. We have two other leaders in OWASP London. Um, I moved from software development into AppSec space in 2005. And uh, I work as an application security consultant and architect for various financial services companies in the city of London. So all in all, I am a defender, right? So why am I presenting a talk about the tool which consists of two words, network and attacker, if I'm an application <laughs> defender. <laughs> but this is about network attacker. So um, I did not create NetHacker. I'm not the original author. I came across NetHacker first time in 2017 when I saw it appearing on a list of OWASP projects. Um, I was curious what that is. I kind of figured out it means network attacker. I tried running it and it's basically displayed a whole bunch of options. And I'm like, I don't understand what this is. And uh, I tried to uh, give it as a parameter a website address. That didn't work. I tried to give it an IP address. It didn't work. So I just gave up and I said, OK, I don't know how this works. I have no time to read documentation. I didn't even know that doc documentation existed. So I just didn't look at it since then. But then. Um, I had to look at it again in December 2018 because myself and uh, my OWASP London chapter co-leader, Dr. Greg Frakos, we got contacted by the leaders of OWASP Netaka project. And they're saying, hello, OWASP London chapter leaders. We are due to come to a Black Hat Europe 2018 conference in London. And unfortunately, uh, uh, we cannot... Uh, we we cannot come to London. We have a problem with uh, with visas, and uh, but we don't want to lose our spot. Can you please go to Black Hat Europe and present it instead of us? And we're like, yeah, sure, we'd love to uh, help out the NOAA's project, uh, but we have no idea what this thing is, right? Can you please teach us and show us what does this thing do, right? We want to learn about it. And I said, no problem. We'll get on a Zoom call. We'll show you what it is. We'll show you what we what we what we've done and. We looked at the demo and we absolutely loved it. I said, oh my God, this, this tool is the best thing since sliced bread. It's brilliant because um, that's exactly what OWASP needs. And um, so we went to Black Hat Europe, presented it, and then this happened with huge crowds of penetration testers, security engineers gathering um, and watching our presentation on the big screen. We said, okay, that's, that sounds great. So I became a Net Netaka co-leader and started working on the project as well. And in 2019, we submitted it to Black Hat Europe in London again. And then even bigger crowds attended the talk. So obviously, a lot of people in pen testing industry are loving it. And if you're here, you probably never heard of it. So what is OWASP Netaka? So OWASP Netaka is an open source software tool, just like all OWASP projects. And its aim is to assist with penetration testing and automating information gathering and vulnerability scanning tasks. It is written in Python. It's 100% Python. It doesn't run any external tools, doesn't use Nmap or anything else. That's a very frequently asked question. But it's written in Python. It can run on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, anything which can run Python. Uh, another very important thing to tell about NetHacker that it is one of the Google Summer of Code projects. If you don't know what Google Summer of Code is, it is an initiative by Google. It's a kind of a paid internship where students apply to enhance or improve an open source project which participates in this initiative. And students work on the on a project of their choice. They have to apply. So they have to like a little bit of essay. Oh, this is why I like this project. This is why I like OWASP Zap or Juice Shop or the attacker. And they proposal what they want to work on what they want their contribution to be. And then uh, these proposals are rated. And then there are slots allocated by Google. Okay, And then uh, students come in and they work during the summer break on that open source project. And they get paid by Google. So OWASP participates every year. And we're quite lucky that OWASP got to wherever it is right now 
thanks to many students who worked on it over the years. So it is a mainly sort of student developed project. So uh, OWASP attacker can be thought of a Swiss army knife kind of tool, because just like a Swiss army knife, it's a tool consisting of many tools, which are not necessarily compatible with each other, but they're all inside sort of one framework, one, one shell. So can they all be used together? So with Netaker, yes, you can do it. It, it is a collection of tools uh, with a module structure. It's easy to create your own modules using YAML. I think everyone knows YAML. Uh, there's no programming required. Um, it's, we, we think it's fast performing and multi-threading because it's using the uh, Python multi-threading. So you can actually make it go fast or slow. You can configure it. And it has customizable profiles, which is really cool. So you can bundle some of these modules together and basically pull out several tools out of your Swiss Army knife at the same time if you need to achieve a specific task. And of course, the great thing, that's why you're probably here, you can automate it. You can run it from command line, GitHub action, or your favorite pipeline tool. So a few more things about Awasna Tucker. The quality of code is not quite there for official release. It's not even kind of a beta version. We have two working versions at the moment, version 002, which was originally created for to work with both Python 2 and Python 3, and then version 003, which is the latest version, which has some really, really cool enhancements. That's the one which has YAML modules and uh, uh, fantastic flexibility. Um, we're always looking for more contributors, just like all of us projects. If you can help Netaka on any other OWASP project, please do. But the advantage of Netaka is that it does have command line interface. It has a web UI. And it has an API. A few people ask them, does it have an API? Yes, it does. It has a report generator and it has Multigo transform. So if you don't know what Multigo is, Multigo is um, an investigation tool, which is coming with Kali Linux, for example. And it's a very popular if you're trying to run some sort of um, investigation. And it has over 70 modules at the moment. So where can you find it? That's the URL, owas.org.wproject.nettacker. It is also on GitHub, and uh, that's where you can find it. And what is very important, that uh, Nettacker lives under the main OWAS GitHub repo. So very easy to find, github.com slash OWAS slash Nettacker. But the documentation is actually also on GitHub. So we utilize GitHub Wiki. I know quite a lot of GitHub projects don't use Wiki. They have like a separate website for documentation or uh, have documentation in a different format. Uh, NetHacker uses Wiki. So if you click on the Wiki button, you will see the documentation and there are installation instructions there. So the frequently, most frequently asked question about NetHacker is what is it and why was it created and how does it compare with to other scanners, right? So everyone knows OWASP ZAP, right? We're at the OWASP conference. Knows another very popular scanner is Burp Suite. So the difference between these scanners is that a scanner such as OWASP ZAP will scan one website for many vulnerabilities. Whatever the scanner is able to find, it will crawl the website to discover all the URLs, all the parameters, all the forms, all the buttons. So basically it's a dust scanner. OWASP NetHacker is a kind of a dust scanner, but that's not the original purpose how it was created because NetHacker scans one or many, and that can be hundreds or thousands of IP addresses, networks, or subdomains. What is it scanning there for? For open ports and also one or more specific vulnerabilities which are listed by the user. If you're going to say, I want to scan my network for vulnerability A, B, C, do I have it? That's what NetHacker is for. And that's the name. It attacks your network. And uh, that's what it does. And you, you can do it bundled in modules, which is great, because obviously you can uh, pick a blade out of your Swiss Army knife. And another really cool thing that it also has a brute forcing module. And that basically make, makes it stand out from all the other tools, because it's actually brute forcing and helps you to find uh, things like default credentials on the network, which is really, really cool. I'm not going to cover installing OWASP NetHacker because uh, there are various, uh, uh, well, documentation is available and I will show you, uh, there's a YouTube video available uh, how to do it as well. NetHacker is on GitHub. I will use version 002 for most of my demos today because version 003 co 
currently has a couple of issues because we're still working on it. Uh, but it's a, it has a great new features which you need to know about. And I will cover them at the end of my talk. But basically, just like any Python tool, what you need to do to install it, you install the dependencies. Please read the manual, which is on the wiki. And you can just clone it from the GitHub repo and then use pip install uh, to install the, your Python requirements. And then you will have the tool ready. So um, I've recorded a video installing an attacker in Kali Linux. It's available on YouTube. You can go and find it. Uh, and uh, I got quite a lot of feedback saying thank you very much because now we know how to install it. It's a bit of out of date because that is recorded in 2021 for Kali Linux Day. And the reason is that I covered installation in Python 2 because, as you know, Python 2 is no longer uh, a current version of Python. It's end of life. But the version 002 of Netaka, several functionality works better with Python 2. That's why we offer both the Docker version and I. In this video, I show how to actually bring Python 2 back to Kali Linux to run NetHacker. So uh, it's available. Uh, we also have NetHacker on OWASP official Docker Hub. Thanks, Harold. So we now, we, for people who don't know, OWASP does have an official Docker Hub account. And NetHacker is now there. And you can just pull NetHacker from Docker Hub by just running a Docker pull command. And it will be there. Another important thing about NetHacker, I don't know how many of you are pen testers, you probably know about a Linux distribution called Black Arch Linux. I was really surprised when one day I was going through my Google alerts about NetHacker and I saw a ping saying, oh, Black Arch Linux is now using NetHacker. So I was really happy and indeed, uh, NetHacker was included in Black Arch Linux distribution. Uh, you can see it there, it's under automation toolkit. So uh, if you're using Black Arch, you don't have to install NetHacker. It comes pre-installed. Now, very important thing about NetHacker is that it is an offensive security tool, right? So just like Zap, it performs vulnerability scans. And it can do, uh, because it scans the whole network, you need to know what you're scanning. So you need to make sure that you have permission before you scan. So today I will be running all my demos on OWASP.org, which I'm allowed to scan because OWASP has a uh, bug bounty program in which it actually gives permission to security research researchers to perform scans of OWASP.org and its subdomains. So what is OWASP NetHacker? You can think of OWASP NetHacker of um, a framework which basically covers three different types of scans. It has modules of type of scan, so you could just perform just generic scanning tasks. For example, port scan is the most popular one. But for example, it can do a subdomain scan, right? It can, can do an ICMP scan. Then uh, modules of type vuln. So these are specific vulnerability detection modules. So what these modules do, they uh, have a pre-programmed payload and go say, okay, if this particular vulnerability requires a particular payload being sent to the target, if a specific response is received, the vulnerability is detected. That's how it works. And then there is a, a cool module uh, called brute for brute forcing. And there are various uh, brute forcing methods available. For example, SSH brute can perform brute forcing over SSH. So I have a screen with many, many modules. And basically, this is the problem where I got lost when I saw all this stuff. But I, I will cover a few of them so you can understand what they do. So admin scan will perform a scan of a target IP address or a website that will try to find anything which looks like an administrative co console, right? So any sorts of admin, uh, your control panel admin, uh, w whatever the, uh, admin um, administrative uh, functionality your application might have. CMS detection scan will try to detect what content management system uh, is used on your target. Directory scan will actually perform what is uh, known as uh, directory brute forcing or deer busting. Some people might know OWASP deer busting tool. And obviously that will help to find some interesting hidden directories, for example, .git. Right or .svn on your folder there on your on your website. Um, another one which I want to highlight is ICMP scan. ICMP scan will scan your network and basically check what is replying to pings. So that will help you discover what is on your network, what is replying uh, to ping requests. PMA scan stands for PHP My Admin. So PHP My Admin is a very popular uh, MySQL database administration tool. And the problem is that it's installed on a lot of websites 
And uh, the way how it is installed, uh, it's either installed without any credentials or with default credentials, which means that <laughs> if you have PHP my admin, if you do you know that you have PHP my admin somewhere in your network, it might be there, it might be with default credentials, which means that um, uh, attackers can actually use it to uh, discover the contents of your databases, which might contain sensitive data. Port scan as currently as a simple port scanner. Subdomain scan is the most useful, probably, uh, scan mechanism because you can actually uh, bundle subdomain scan with all the other modules. So uh, before you do any other scan, you can pre perform subdomain scan and then say, okay, do a port scan on all subdomain of OWASP.org, for example. Wapalizer scan, uh, for those of you who don't know, Wapalizer is a tool which allows you to discover which technologies are running on the target. WordPress, everyone knows WordPress, and uh, probably you know that older versions of WordPress have a lot of vulnerabilities. So an attacker can scan your entire network or your whole domain and find all instances of WordPress and their versions. And it can also perform scans of all the uh, plugins which are installed in WordPress. And also it can enum enumerate uh, WordPress users. And again, why is it useful for an attacker? Because if you have a WordPress user uh, with a username, um, which matches um, the actual user on your network, right? All the attacker needs to do is now brute force the password because the username is known, so they know exactly what users exist on your network. There's lots of lots of vulnerability modules. I'm not going to cover them all. I will today. We'll be talking about the Microsoft Exchange CVE, otherwise known as Proxy Logon, because this was a very very big vulnerability. Um, there is actually a module for Log4j as well, so I need to have there for Log4j. But I think the uh, Proxy Logon was a much bigger one because it it allowed a lot of exploitation um, um, a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, another one which I want to cover is the SSL certificate expired vulnerability. So you can use NetHacker to scan your network and find if you have any service which, uh, with SSL certificates ex expired on them. So that is also quite useful. And uh, you also have a, a module which I want to highlight called X Powered By Vuln. So X Powered By is a header which is inserted by some web service which indicates the version and the name of the technology in use. For example, version of .NET, version of PHP, right? And uh, that can be, again, useful to attackers because then they can go and search for vulnerabilities and attack your um, network with a specific, um, uh, with specific exploits targeted for that version. Brute force, this is really cool because NetHacker can use FTP brute forcing HTTP basic auth brute forcing. It also has HTTP form brute forcing. So if you have a login form on your website, that is how it works. Again, a lot of people are asking me, how does it work? Basically, it just looks for um, anything on the web page, a, a form which has a form field called username and a form field called password, but you can configure it. So for example, your applications have account name and password, then that can be done as well. Um, HTTP NTLM brute forcing, SMTP brute forcing. Again, not many people perform SMTP brute forcing. They forget that this is actually a brute forcing vector into your network because they protect web applications and web login forms. But if you have a SMTP server, you know, attackers can just go enumerate uh, usernames and passwords and, and find them from your SMTP server. Uh, Telnet brute forcing, again, getting out of date, but there's still uh, network devices which use Telnet. And WordPress XML RPC brute forcing will brute force into your WordPress installations. So a uh, very quick slide to tell about the original purpose of NetHacker. When NetHacker was created, it was not called NetHacker. It was called IoT Scan. The original name was OWASP IoT Scan. And uh, the authors originally were trying to obviously highlight that uh, we need to scan network for IoT devices. And this tool will also allow you to scan the network for open ports on these IoT devices and also brute force for default credentials. I actually used NetHacker for this purpose at one of the financial services institutions in London because they said, Sam, we have a whole bunch of um, network cameras all over our offices. We have no idea uh, if any of them are configured with default credentials. 
can you please scan the network and find the, those cameras who respond to admin admin, which I did and I found it in just a few minutes. So that's what you can do with NetHacker. If you use CCTV cameras or any other IoT devices and you know what is the default credential for, for these devices, how do you find those cameras which still have the default credentials. So that's why it was very useful. So uh, this little logo, this little radar was the original logo created for NetHacker and NetHacker's Twitter account is actually IoT scan. So port scan is probably the most popular module that people use and uh, it's, um, I think it's easier to use than Nmap. Uh, a lot of people have kind of love and hate relationship with Nmap. I can never remember all the command line options on Nmap. And with NetHacker, it's easy. You just say port scan. And then if you want to scan specific ports, you just add dash G parameter and then you just list them with a comma, which is uh, uh, quite cool. And uh, this brings me to the most important slide. How do you run NetHacker? I will show you in a demo in a second. But remember the very first slide when I started to learn about NetHacker, I couldn't figure out how to run it because I run it and just returns me uh, uh, how, how to use NetHacker, a whole bunch of command line options. To run NetHacker, you need two things. You need a target, what are you scanning? And you need the module. What module are you going to scan it with, right? So, uh, for example, here, if you want to scan one IP address, you give it one IP address for a port scanner. Or if you want to scan the whole network, in this case, slash 24 or 256 IP addresses, that's what you give to NetHacker. And once you provide these two parameters, it will start scanning. So this brings me to another cool thing, why NetHacker is such a great scanner compared with others. Because what you can scan with NetHacker, you can scan one IP address, you can scan an IP address range from and to, so you can basically define the start and ending IP addresses. You can scan subdomains based, uh, subnetworks, sorry, the, uh, based on CIDR. You can scan subdomains, for example, you can find all subdomains of OWASP.org. And you can also scan specific URLs with HTTP or HTTPS protocol. So that is what makes it so cool. Uh, but that doesn't end here. You can actually load targets from a text file. So if you're a large organization, I'm pretty sure you probably own several domains. And I'm pretty sure you will have lots of IP addresses and IP uh, ranges. So if you want to use NetHacker in your organization, all you need to do is basically create a text file basically list all the domains you own, list all the IP ranges that you own, and that is your target's uh, file that you can use for NetHacker to scan your network. So here, for example, for OWASP, we own OWASP.org, we own OWASP.com, and internally we have this IP range. And of course, what's great about NetHacker, you can run it inside your network and you can run it from outside your network. So today I will show you both, and I will actually will be scanning for out, from outside the network also using GitHub Actions because that will help you to understand how to automate it. And of course, another cool thing that you can chain several modules together. But before I go into the chaining, well, so the chaining is easy. You just separate modules with a comma and it will run several modules. And that is what's really, really cool. So if you want to do a port scan and then you want to do an X powered by vulnerability scan, you can just combine them. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I have my Kali Linux running here in a VM. I hope you guys can see it. So this is what uh, NetHacker looks like when you start it. I have two windows with two different versions, version 002, version 003. So if I run it without any parameters, as you can see, it just gives you lots of information about its scanning methods, its modules, uh, various languages, uh, right? That's what got me confused. So what do you do? You define, we already know how to run it, dash I, the target. So you can provide an IP address. Uh, or you can provide a uh, uh, domain. So, for example, if I go and say, I want to provide OWASP.org, I want to scan OWASP.org, and I want to uh, check uh, OWASP.org for uh, what, what's the server version vulnerability on it. So, no, actually, before I do server version, let me show you the subdomain scan. Subdomain scan is probably the coolest one. Okay, so this will now go and try to discover all the subdomains of OWASP.org using various passive methods. It's not actually doing any dictionary brute forcing. There you go, it found all the subdomains of OWASP, which is great, right? But uh, that's not where it ends. 
because now I want to say, okay, I know which subdomains exist in my organization. Um, what are the web servers which are running? So what I want to do, I want to perform a port scan. And I'll say, okay, I want a port scan. And I want to run a port scan on, on just the port 80 and 443 because that's where web servers are running. But I also want to add server version vulnerability. I want to see what is server version vulnerability. So server uh, version is a server header is a header which is returned by a lot of by a lot of web servers to tell you which server uh, version they're running is it is8 is10 whether that's uh, apache nginx and again why is it useful to an attacker if you know the specific version of the server then you can perform specific attacks it's right twice. Yeah. Twice. Yeah, yeah 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 thanks and then I will add one more. So you see, I am now ch chaining one, two, three, quite a lot of uh, uh, modules. I will actually remove subdomain scan because the way how to do subdomain scan on all the modules is slightly different. Uh, add X powered by vulnerability. Okay, this will try to find uh, any subdomains of OWASP which have X powered by server header enabled. Okay, and if I in act, actually, to make it work on all the subdomains, I have to add dash s. This is what will actually perform the subdomain scan. So what is going to happen right now is that NetTacker is first of all is going to do exactly what it did before. It's going to go and discover all subdomains of OWASP.org, right? Notice the once it discovered them, it will then try to run all the modules and they will be run sequ sequentially. So there you go. You can see. Now it's discovering something. We can see there's some server version disclosure vulnerability. We can see X powered by vulnerability. We can see several um, ports being discovered. So the port 80 and port 443. And uh, there you go. You can see how it works. And after it finishes, it will provide us with a report. And uh, by default, that report is going to be in text format, but also it will be available in some other format. So there you go. That's the result. Okay. So what is great about NetHacker that it actually uses a database. It has a built-in SQL Server database. So none of the scans are actually lost. Yeah, I'll show you how to access them using uh, Web UI in a minute. But also I will show you a cool thing. So obviously this is a text report, but you see here it says report saved in this report file and database. So that's an HTML file. Let me try to open this HTML file. Okay, I will copy that HTML file because that is the actual report, right? So this is the uh, report of our vulnerability scan that we've just performed. I believe there should be a Firefox pre-installed on Kali Linux. So let me see if I open this HTML file with Firefox. And uh, in a second, you will see something interesting. You will see a very cool feature called penetration testing graph. So you can see the attack was started and you can see that all the subdomains were discovered and then you can see which modules of NetHacker provided results. So port scan here returned two ports. Server version vulnerability returned two vulnerabilities. So basically the server was available on both port 80 and 443. And you we can see here, this was Cloudflare, right? And uh, you can see there's a, um, uh, if I keep scrolling, let me see if I just zoom in. Um, one of the cool things here. So based on the shape of this graph, you can uh, you see uh, if there was something missing, right? Or uh, for example, here, right? Uh, you see here the three branches, uh, on this particular, um, subdomain, which is giving OWASP.org. Why? Because there was an X powered by vulnerability here. See? It's, there was a PHP 813. X powered by. So why the graph is useful? Because it provides you a nice visual information about uh, findings. And here you have your results in a tabular format, which is great. And uh, there you go. That is basically a list of all OWASP.org's uh, web-based assets, all the port numbers, and uh, which server version they're running, and what's 
kind of technology they're running in terms of the version of the programming language. You can see quite a lot of them are using Cloudflare, where I can see some uh, Nginx, some PHP, etc. So this is actually quite cool. So the next thing that I want to show you is, uh, let me see, uh, uh, Obviously, I've got my demo. There is a little bit about profiles, which I'll probably cover a little bit later. Uh, one thing about reports is that the reports are available not just HTML. They're also available in JSON and in CSV formats. And the cool thing about CSV is, of course, that uh, you get a spreadsheet. And... Uh, <laughs> um, everyone has love and hate relationship with spreadsheet. But if someone, if your boss comes to you and say, Hey... Can you give me a list of all our web applications? <laughs> can you give me a list of our web servers? What is it that we're running? And you can say, yes, I can give you a spreadsheet. And you can just use one command in the attacker to generate that. So this is really, really cool. And I will show you how to do it in automated fashion. And you can do it every night, uh, every day. You can keep scanning and say, oh, have we got something appearing? And some developer accidentally or intentionally spun up a virtual machine and left it running on port 22 or port 80. So this is what is really cool about the attacker because that what it allows you to discover. Now, the next cool thing I want to show about an attacker is that it has an API and it has a built-in web server. So I'm not going to use API in API mode. I will show API in a web UI mode. So to uh, an attacker includes Flask web server and... Um, if you start the attack with dash dash start API command, it will be started and you can see it will give you an API key. That's very important because that's what you use to log in. By default, it's running on localhost 127001 and port 5000. You can change it. And I'm actually going to change it because I want to be able to access this from my machine. So I will change API host to 000. So it listens on all the interfaces. Okay. And I need to make sure I copy this API key. And let me just check what's the IP address of my Kali machine. And I can see it's 176. So I can now go and try to access it. 192.132.176. So Flask is running on uh, using HTTPS, so it, it has TLS. But one important thing to remember, of course, that by default the certificate is self-signed, so you will get a warning. But if you have a an SSL certificate, you can install it and you can use that as well. So that is the web UI of NetHacker. You cannot do much stuff here without logging in. So it says, please log in first. And because this is actually an API server, you need to log in using an API key. So I'll just paste, paste the API key. It says, success, your session is now updated. You are now logged in. So what you can do in API and in Web UI, first of all, you can run your scans from here. And there is a web interface here. And you can go and say, oh, I would like to scan something. And you can put your IP address here, or you can put OWASP.org if you want to scan OWASP.org, okay, like this. And then you can see our modules are color-coded. So green is for scan, red is for vulnerability, and orange is for brute forcing, right? And basically you can see everything lights up. Or you can just uh, go and click on any particular uh, module that you like. So for example, if I would like to perform XPART uh, by scan, I can do it here. You can see that there are multiple languages available. So if you want to report in different language. And if you speak different language, please help us translate the attacker because we want to make sure that it is internationalized. And they can generate def different types of graphs as well. Uh, there's also an advanced screen here. Here you can control how many threads you want the attacker to run, how many retries between uh, connections, uh, uh, how many seconds to sleep between the retries, any specific port numbers you want to limit the scans to. And there's also a list of users and passwords that you want to use for any, for brute forcing. And there are also some extra module options available. But one thing that I'm going to use here is click on check subdomains. That basically means whatever module I selected, I want it to be scanned on all the subdomains. So now if I click on submit, you will see the API call. Actually, this is what happens. You will see there's a post request going into the API and disappears, which means the engine is now picked up 
and it's performing the scan. Once the scan is complete, it will be visible here in the results. As you can see, I previously ran three other scans as a uh, test. And you, also you can see the results of previous scans we've done using the command line. So this is actually what I've just scanned a minute ago, demonstrating to you uh, what is available here. And uh, here is what's very cool, because as you can see, you can get the results using JSON or CSV. So there you go, I've just got my CSV file here. So if I go and open that CSV file uh, using uh, my LibreOffice here, we will get what we were actually looking for. And that is the spreadsheet with all OWASP.org um, um, assets. So there is one column here, which is scan ID. And I usually delete it because every scan has a unique scan ID. But you can see here, um, there is a username and password. Username and password columns are here if you're doing brute forcing. If NetHacker finds particular combination of credentials on the target, they will be displayed here. You can see uh, what type, what, what module was run. And you can see on which host it was run. And you can see all the open ports and host. And of course, this is great because you can now just use this um, uh, for filtering. And if I want to go and find out what's running Nginx at OWASP, uh, I can just go and perform that uh, uh, the filter in my um, um, spreadsheet. There you go. I can see that this home, givingowas.org and secureflag.org are subdomains of my organization, which run Nginx. And I can see that one of uh, subdomains is actually disclosing the version of Nginx, which is not good. Right? So we need to go and have a world with our IT guys saying, well, we should really be hiding it like just like we do with other uh, services. So this is absolutely fantastic. I don't know any other security tool, which is free and open source and can give you all your assets and perform this kind of scans. And of course, I didn't do, well, there are some vulnerability scans. So the server version is vulnerable, but there are other vulnerability modules which will scan for more severe vulner vulnerabilities, of course. And uh, that's what I will cover next. And I will also show that we how you can automate it as well. So that's on the web UI. Now, uh, let me return back to the presentation. Of course, you've seen the uh, wondrous... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, spreadsheet. Again, spreadsheets are, are great for project managers or for many other causes and um, to have the full inventory of your network and vulnerability is important. Why? Uh, people who know Jeremiah Grossman, who is our AppSec industry veteran and the founder of White Hat Security, and he's done a lot of uh, work for us at OWASP as well. So when we were releasing OWASP Top 10 in 2017, he tweeted and said, I suggest the OWASP Top 10 2017 includes one more entry, A0, Asset Inventory, because these days the biggest AppSec risks are websites you don't know you own. Because obviously if you don't know what you own, you cannot possibly secure it. And those of you who attended uh, Tanya Jenkins' keynote, of course, you, you've seen that she uh, covered inventory as a very, very important thing. You need to know what apps, what services you have, because without that, you have no way of securing them. Now, I'm going to uh, show you how you can uh, automate NetHacker. You don't have to run it from a command line. You can use a GitHub action or a, your favorite pipeline tool. So I uh, have the little QR here because I have a, a uh, repo just called uh, NetHacker Automation. And as you can see here, uh, the this GitHub action is utilizing uh, containers. So I use Docker. So GitHub action um, will pick up, will, will perform a Docker pull of OWASP NetHacker 002. And then it will run NetHacker similarly in the command line. And you can see here, I use a combination uh, of the same modules that I showed you earlier. And... I then generate it, put it into report.csv file, and it generates it as an artifact. So let's go and have a look at GitHub. So let me switch back to GitHub. Okay, so this is uh, the NetTacker automation repo. And let me just increase the font for you so you can see what it looks like. So that is the NetHacker scan. And you can see what's cool about automation because I can tell GitHub to perform this scan every night. So every night at 35 minutes past midnight, 
GitHub Action wakes up, pulls NetHacker Docker uh, uh, container, spins it up, and performs a scan on OWASP.org, finds all the subdomains, tries to find all the server versions which are leaking, all expired by which are leaking, performs a port scan, and then saves it in report.csv. And then I use another GitHub um, uh, action, which is upload artifact, and it generates my artifact as NetHacker report and the GitHub run number. And uh, let's have a look at the actions. So you can see there are several runs of it. So uh, I have quite a few of this. So if we look at this particular one, you can see that uh, it was run last night, 14 hours ago. There you go. I can see it, it was performed at uh, 35 minutes past midnight. And if I look at the log, you, we will see our already familiar in attacker. We can see all the scans that were performed. And we can see the long list of all our assets which were discovered with, along with all the vulnerabilities. And they are all available to us now. And it, I can just go and scroll down to the artifacts and download it. There you go. And it will be, well, in this case, it's CSV, but obviously we, we can also uh, ask NetHacker to download it in uh, other format, for example, in uh, JSON, if you want to integrate it with um, uh, any other tool. So there you go. This is the familiar CSV file, and that was generated last night. Uh, I'm going to show you another example how you can use NetHacker. And GitHub Actions. I have basically three examples in, in uh, uh, this repo. There's one which is called OWASP port 22 scan. So if you are probably running any of your systems in the cloud, you know that uh, leaving port 22 open, your SSH port is quite bad, right? Because that allows the attackers, uh, that allows attackers to perform uh, brute forcing and basically just gives a way into your network. So, um, what I've done, I said, okay, let me create a uh, GitHub action which performs a scan of OWASP.org and tries to find, do we have a port 22 open somewhere? And turns out what that we do. And if you go and have a look at it, you will see that um, uh, here on the OWASP attacker, uh, uh you will also notice that the version of NetHacker here is different because I use the latest version. And the latest version also says that it performs subdomain scan. And Paul, you asked me earlier uh, what subdomain um, uh, methods are being used. So one of them is, of course, CRT.sh, so certificate transparency. But there are three other sources, and you can find them from YAML files. And you can see, so there are four different sources of subdomains which are being utilized. And then we actually discovered, so OWASP.org actually does have one subdomain, which is DSOM. For those of you who don't know what DSOM is, this is a DevSecOps maturity model. And it's an awesome project, which I urge you to go and check it out. But the website, which is running the um, the matrix, it actually does have port 22 currently open. For whatever reason, I'm going to go and have a chat with, uh, <laughs> with the project leader, with our team, and say, uh, did you have port 22 open? And I have a tool which helped me scan everything that OWASP owns and find out that uh, this subdomain is the offending one. So that is uh, one cool use. And then there's another one. So obviously I try to use um, uh, Wappalizer and Wappalizer performs a full web tech scan. So basically it will try to find not just open ports, obviously not just uh, versions of service, but we'll try to find um, things like programming languages, things like technologies, like JavaScript frameworks. So I ran it a couple of hours ago um, uh, during the lunch break, and uh, you can see it took seven minutes to scan the entire oh, uh, the entire organization, um, and uh, which is pretty cool, right? Show me a scanner which can scan your entire organization networks and in seven minutes find all the frameworks. Obviously, this particular screen here is just a log. We can see that they found it. But again, I am actually going to uh, put my project manager's hat on and say, okay, um, I want to actually see what was the, um, uh, um, what was vulnerable, right? So I can now go back and now go and check if it generated me the uh, artifact. Yes, it did. That's a NetHacker report Wappalizer. There you go. Let's try to open it. There you go. 
And if we go and open this one, we will see that this spreadsheet is significantly bigger than the previous one. And you will see here that it take, contains things like uh, programming language Ruby, JavaScript framework jQuery. Right? You can see cache tools varnish. Right? You can see uh, Google font APIs. You can see payment processes Stripe. I'm so, oh, interesting. Uh, we're using Stripe. So where are we using Stripe? Let me go and search for Stripe. And yeah, I found that we have a domain called giving OWASP.org. If you didn't know that it exists, now you know it is actually a uh, donation raising portal. So go and check it out. And obviously I use my awesome tool to uh, show you how to, how to discover it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Quickly, um, obviously I've covered all this, the API. Um, NetTucker helped to find uh, this CVE. So if you guys don't remember, there's a, a um, big proxy logon vulnerability and uh, you, there's an article from ZNet about exchange server zero day flows are being actively exploited and basically there were countries which were being hacked. And I... I created the uh, module and I published this uh, blog post uh, and, and tweeted about this, say, hey, we actually have a cool free open source tool called NetHacker. It can scan your entire network and find any exchange service which have this vulnerability. And guess what? I got contacted by a uh, computer emergency response center of a small European country that I'm not allowed to name. I just say it's a small country. And I said, thank you very much, OWASP and OWASP and attacker leaders, because we use your tool to scan our entire country's IP range. We've identified vulnerable exchange server on the internet, and we contacted people responsible to make sure that they patch them. So this, I think it was a very good success story for an attacker. And of course, you, you can do that too. So. And this is what I used. I just said NetHacker, and well, you can just go and use it for MS Exchange vulnerability. NetHacker also has Log4J module. If you want to scan your whole network for Log4J, you can go and do it. So wrapping up, what can you use NetHacker for? You can use it for asset discovery, internal and external, also known as attack surface management these days, right? And it can perform external attack surface uh, discovery and internal attack surface discovery. It will scan your network as, on subdomains for service and open ports for web service technologies, programming languages. Uh, I don't have time to show you brute forcing today, but it can brute force the whole network and find any service which respond to credentials. It will. You can also give it dictionaries of passwords and credentials leaked. Right, for example, Twitter leak, right, or any other leak, or uh, no top 100 most used passwords, and you can actually brute force your own network to find out if anyone is using these leaked passwords. You can scan your whole network for a specific vulnerability, like you, I showed you with the Microsoft Exchange. You can discover expired SSL certificates in your networks. You can find. Um, Assets or find subdomains which are hosting vulnerable versions of content management systems such as WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla, and uh, the attacker can be used not just by attackers, but you can use it as a defender. Just I show you, I showed you uh, uh, an automated way in GitHub Actions, but you can also use it uh, for bug bounty. So I get a lot of. Uh, feedback from people who are security researchers, and they actually saying that Netaka helps them in their bug bounty uh, research, which is absolutely great. So, in case you didn't know, GitHub has its own top ten. So there's a here is the GitHub top ten most starred OWASP repo. So a star is of course a like. So if you like it, you should put a star on it. So please check out NetHacker and put a star on it. So currently NetHacker is number seven. It used to be number 10. We are now <laughs> just below OWAS top 10. But actually, uh, I'm proud to say there are more people who like NetHacker than ASVS <laughs> <laughs> on GitHub, which is interesting. Um, in version 3, all the modules are defined in YAML. In version 002, everything was in Python. Um, you can look at it. You can create your own modules and contribute your own modules. It's all free and open source. If there's a new vulnerability out, you can create a new YAML module to go and look for that specific vulnerability. And of course, we're looking for more contributors. There are 
contributor guidelines available on the website. So there's a developer section on the wiki, which I ask you to go and explore. And please help us. And you don't have to be a Python coder to contribute to any of us project. You can also help us with translations, documentation, and even things like proofreading the documentation because a lot of documentation is written by students and it's written by people for whom English is not the first language and obviously help us to translate it to your language. So thank you very much and go attack your own network before the real attackers do. <laughs> you need to turn it on right, for questions. <laughs> There's a button at the bottom, right, uh, Andy, to turn the mic on. The red button. Okay. Is it lighting up? Let's see. Oh, okay, this little one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. It, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. it takes a second. First of all, thank you for the lecture. Loved it. Uh, I was just uh, wondering, uh, when you use the port scan feature, uh, is it like Nmap, like it used the, the top thousand ports it or does. whatever? It does. Yeah, good question. So uh, just like Nmap, Nataka will use top 1,000 ports, but you can uh, sp uh, give it the range of ports. If you do 0 to 65,535, it will scan everything. By default, it uses the top 1,000 most popular ports. Again, this is just to speed up the scanning. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody at the back? Any question before I come back to the front? Anybody down this way at the moment? No? Okay. Yes, Yo, thanks, Tam. Uh, was a really nice talk. I have one question about like security automation as a next step. So, if we look at it from a defender perspective, let's say you find uh, SSH ports open or whatever, or something very serious, is it like uh, is that the API have some sort of triggering or webhook triggering uh, to let's say if you're on the cloud, for example, to update some IP file rules to really to reduce the risk, or is it just we're gathering information, but it's totally up to you. What do you do as the next step in terms of security automation? Uh, good question. At the moment, uh, the answer is no. All that Netacker does, it is a, a reconnaissance tool, information discovering tool. So it will find it, it will it will put it into the report for you. It, it, but it is searchable because as I saw in the web GUI, you can go and search it because it, this information doesn't disappear. It keeps it in a database and you can go and search it and find out what, which ports do I have open? Where do I have Nginx? Where do I have Apache? Where do I have, where do I have PHP 5? I recently used Nataka to find PHP 5. If you don't know, PHP 5 is end of life. And it's uh, horribly vulnerable. So if you have anything running PHP 5, how do you find it? Use Nataka. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you. But uh, yeah, of course, for things like alerting, what will you do? I'm, I uh, will try to, as a next step, maybe for the next Google Summer of Code, make sure that we generate some files for defect dojo. So, um, it's our next step. Yeah. Thanks. Do you have a final question or more questions? Hi, Sam. Um, thank you for the talk. I have a question uh, regarding one of the use cases that you mentioned, for example, um, asset inventory. Is there any uh, feature um, that does some sort of comparison between scans exactly to check if there are new assets um, in the most recent scan? Again, very good question. Not at the moment, but because uh, every scan result is A, in the database, and B, is dumped as a JSON file, you can just use a JSON diff and basically find the difference between two scans. Because obviously, if your network uh, assets are exactly the same today as they were yesterday, the JSON report generated today is going to be exactly the same as yesterday. And the second it changes, that's the difference. <laughs> And as a follow-up question, is there any good way to uh, decentralize the database then um, to keep it persistent? Uh, yes. So, um, again, by default, it's a built-in SQLite, but uh, NetHacker also supports MySQL, and it also supports Postgres. So Postgres is an enterprise-grade database. You can centralize it, and in the configuration file, you can define the uh, uh, address and credentials for Postgres, and it will store everything in centralized database. Hey, uh, one question. I'm wondering how does it discover the subdomains? Uh, yes, uh, good question. So it uses four different uh, services. I can go and actually tell you what is being um, there at the moment. So one is, of course, the CRTSH. If you don't know what that is, this is the certificate transparency log. And this service will show you for 
I don't know, any particular uh, domain, again, I will use OWASP.org, uh, any SSL certificates which are registered for this domain, but also when uh, you go and uh, start registering a new SSL certificate, there is a so-called, well, they have to go into the CT log first, and uh, uh, obviously that's probably a very good, reliable way of finding subdomains on which you want to put uh, SSL. Right, so this so, is number one, number one source. But there are three others. There's a DNS dumpster, and there are two more. There's another one which does a lookup based on the IP address. There's a service which uh, does a reverse DNS lookup on all the IP address space on the internet, and again, it's a public database, so that is being used. Uh, and I think there's there's one more. So there are four different sources which Netaka is using at the moment. Again, these are configurable. So you can just find the subdomain YAML file in the uh, NetHacker repository, and you can add your own sources if you think uh, you can find better sources. And there's another interesting thing that uh, what I always tell people, combine NetHacker with OWASP AMAS. We have OWASP AMAS, which is a great uh, subdomain discovery tool. And obviously OWASP AMAS is a specific tool for finding subdomains, and then use the output from AMAS as an input text file for NetHacker. So if you look at the um, uh, modules and you look at the scans in our uh, repo, you will find the uh, subdomain and you will see all the services which are in use. So there's a gldc.me, that's number one, certspotter.com, threatcrowd.org, uh, URL scan.io, DNS buffer overrun, and uh, Alien uh, Vault's uh, OTX, online threat exchange. So these are, and then, oh, there's one more, there's a threat miner as well. So these are all the uh, sources on top of CRTSH, which are currently in use. And you can see it's very simple to define another service if you want to use a different subdomain discovery service. Okay. And Sam will be around, I think, for a little while before he jets back off to London this evening. So thanks very much once again. Thank you very much.